quiz time. Besides amazing voices, a sixth sense of style, and really good agents, what do Leia Salonga, Bruno Mars, her, and Olivia Rodrigo all have in common? Stick around for the answer, but fair warning, if you wanna find out, you're gonna have to do things my way. Welcome to The Remix with Theater Moo. I'm your host, Brandon. Is it just me, or have you noticed how some of the most popular Asian American performers on Broadway are Filipino? If you love musicals as much as I do, you immediately think of Leia Salonga, who was the first woman of Asian descent to win a Tony Award at the age of 18. Salonga's boundary-breaking career includes lead roles in the Broadway revival of Flower Drum Song and Allegiance. In addition to her portrayals of Asian characters, she was also the first woman of Asian descent to play both Eponine and Fontaine in Les Miserables, and is probably best known for her work as the singing voice of not one, but two animated Disney heroines, Jasmine and Mulan. So if you want to call her Princess Leia like I do, you go right ahead. The roll call of Filipino American talent doesn't stop there. Let's talk about rising star, Ava Noblezada. Like Leia Salonga, she also made her Broadway debut at 18. More recently, she earned acclaim for originating the role of Eurydice in Town. And it isn't just these two astounding women. Broadway is riddled with talented Filipinos. And looking beyond Broadway, many of the Asian artists we see in the popular music industry are also of Filipino descent. Bruno Mars, Olivia Rodrigo, Darren Chris, Vanessa Hudgens, her, Apple Diap from the Black Eyed Peas, Nicole Scherzinger from the Pussycat Dolls, and many more. So why is it that music and singing have become so ingrained in our Filipino heritage? Well, I can't help but acknowledge one of the most glaringly obvious parts of Filipino culture that might be a contributing factor. Karaoke. Karaoke comes from mashing two Japanese words together. Karapo, meaning empty, and oke, short for oke sutra. The literal translation is empty orchestra, and karaoke is one of the most popular pastimes in the Philippines. It's pretty hard to find a Filipino household that doesn't contain a karaoke machine, and it's harder still to imagine a social gathering or event that doesn't feature karaoke. Weddings, birthday parties, even funerals. It's that serious. So serious, in fact, that the song My Way by Frank Sinatra is essentially banned in all karaoke bars around the Philippines. A social phenomenon known as the My Way killings took place between 2002 and 2012, where at least six people were actually killed for simply singing the song off key. I mean, we all know the old saying, it's my way or the high, I'm gonna stab you for singing badly now. Karaoke machines haven't been around forever, so how did singing become so popular in the Philippines in the first place? How did folks pass the time at large celebrations and community events before they had microphones and neon words flashing across the TV screen? When it comes to the history and cultural heritage of the Philippines, there's a lot to dissect. For the most part, the music can be split into three distinct styles, indigenous, religious, and pop. First, we'll start with the indigenous traditions. When looking at the country geographically, it's clear that the Philippines is a part of Asia, so we can assume there's going to be some influence from Eastern musical styles. Although these practices used to span the entire country, nowadays, indigenous traditions are really only practiced by about 10% of the population. This is where instruments like thongs, flutes, and drums come in. There are traditional songs about marriage, war victories, children's play songs, and even songs about disputes between the tribes. Although still practiced in rural and mountainous regions, many of these Eastern influenced indigenous traditions are disappearing. Urban areas get most of the media attention and culturally speaking, these regions are heavily influenced by Spain and the US. The Philippines was a Spanish colony for 333 years. In addition to imposing new laws, 
The colonizers also changed the language, the clothing styles, and the ways in which people could practice their faith. Catholicism is now the most common religion in the Philippines, followed by indigenous religions and then Islam. The Catholic Church influenced the music in the urban areas, adding European-style secular hymns and Hispanic flavor to the pre-existing traditional spirituals. But that's not all. The Philippines was also under American domination for 45 years, which unknowingly influenced musical styles. Which brings us to more of the pop styles known today. Despite music already being a big part of the Filipino culture, American occupiers decided to add music to the public school system. And while that might not sound like such a bad thing, it was a very selective curriculum that focused on Western style music. This further divided the pop-infused urban centers from the traditional Eastern styles sung in the more rural mountainous areas. Despite diverging styles, there's one thing that still holds true. Music has always been a way for Filipinos to come together. Whether it's a song and dance for a tribal meeting in the indigenous regions, a secular hymn sung in Sunday mass, or a BTS song being screamed by hundreds of teenage girls. Singing is a staple of all Filipino communities. So it's no wonder that so many Filipino Americans aspire to become Broadway stars. It's one of the few constants that Filipinos can latch onto, knowing that they're making their ancestors proud no matter what. So the next time you roll up to your local Filipino restaurant and you hear everyone belting out their favorite pop ballad and you think, wow, it's just karaoke. They're trying way too hard or why do they care so much? Isn't karaoke supposed to be silly? Remember, it's not just karaoke, and it's not just silly. For Filipinos, it's our culture.